Nicole, the math lady. Today we're talking about volume of a right solid. Well, let's first just hold it right there. What is a right solid? Ah, a right solid is any figure where the base, that we here, the base, and the height are perpendicular. They're forming a right angle as it does in this rectangular prism. So the volume, you know, pretty much we've learned the volume of a rectangular prism, right? We'd call it volume equals length times width times height. Now we're going to use what we know about the volume of a rectangular prism to apply it to a bunch of other right solids. So we're going to change, we're just going to regroup how we look at this formula. And we're going to say we know that length times width is area, right? Yeah, it's area of the base, 8 times 4. That would be our length times our width. So we're going to say, we're going to regroup it. Instead of saying length times width, we're just going to call it the area of the base. Okay? And then times the height. So let's do it. The area of the base. Our base is a rectangle. We know the sides are 8 and 4. So the area of the base is 8 times 4, which is 32. And then we're going to times it by the height here, which is 3. Okay, and then now we just do our multiplication. 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9. We have 96 inches cubed, right? Because volume is always cubed. Okay, now the good news is, like, you knew how to do that already. But what if our, our, um, our, right solid wasn't a rectangle. What if it was a triangle or a square? Could we still apply this to figuring out the volume of those figures? Take a look at these examples. So on the left we have what's called a triangular prism, right? Because we have a triangle as the base and anytime you have a polygon on your uh, three-dimensional figure here, we can call that a prism. But if we have a circle instead of a polygon, we call that a cylinder. And here we have a right circular cylinder. Let's see if we can apply the same formula about volume to both of them. And that volume is the area of the base times the height. Okay, so let's take a look. We know that the area of the base, the base of this triangular prism is a triangle. So the area of a triangle is one half base times height. And then we're going to multiply this whole thing times, I'm going to do a big H for the big height. Let's do it. One half times the base. Our base is three. Our height is five. Let's figure that part out. Five times three is 15. Half of that is 7.5 times the big height, which is 6. And you're going to love this. For these examples, I'm going to allow you to use a calculator. Yes, I am, because I really don't, I don't care as much that you know how to do the computations. I really want to make sure you know how to set the problem up correctly. Okay, so you can use your calculator to do this math here. Let me go grab my calculator. Here we go. 7.5 times 6 equals 45. So the volume of this is 45 centimeters cubed. Because remember, volume is always going to be cubed. Okay? And again, we've got three dimensions, centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. All right, let's see what happens with our right circular cylinder. So it's the same thing. Find the area of the base. Well, what is the area of a circle? Well, you might remember the area of a circle, we're going to use blue, is pi radius squared. And then we're going to times it by the big H for height. Well, for pi, let's use 3.14. And for radius, we have 5, but we're going to square it. So 5 times 5 is 25. And then we'll time this whole thing by 6, which is our height. Okay, let's get our calculator out and see how we do. 3.14 times 25 times 6. And that answer is going to be 471 inches cubed.
Okay, it really is that simple. So again, we're using what we know about the rectangular prism, length times width times height. But instead of saying length times width, we're saying, hey, find the area of the base. So if it's a triangle, you use that formula. If it's a circle, you use that formula. As long as you can remember those formulas, this one is pretty easy. You just multiply that area of the base times the height. Okay, that's it for me today. I've got a bunch of problems for you in the practice set on the website. Make sure you give them a try so you know how to do these problems. Okay, I hope to see you next time. So call the math lady. Have a good one. Bye-bye.